Welcome back to the Rhonda Swan Show. Well, our fireside episodes are here again. While I have been traveling around the USA, I've been able to interview some amazing people, athletes, entrepreneurs, those that have done amazing things with their life, but they're leaving an impact with their brand. And I'm really excited to introduce to you my next guest. Her name is Santia Deck. She's actually history-making female professional football player. She's a social media influencer with over 800,000 loyal, engaged followers. She was a former track and field collegiate athlete, but most recently she made history by getting the offered, by being offered the highest paid contract in female football history. Santi is published author. She's a fitness model. She's a TV personnel, social media consultant, public speaker, and she's also a TV host. She maintains her fitness certifications by working with a variety of services with different celebrities. But her biggest, biggest launch that just came out is she's most recently added the successful startup CEO to her long list of wins with the launch of Tronus, where she made history a second time by becoming the first female athlete to own a shoe company. The innovative footwear brand has been experiencing impressive growth since its launch in the summer of 2020, despite even the pandemic. Santia led Tronus to record sales, celebrity praise, and dedicated base of customers. The company continues to expand, and I cannot wait for you to meet this powerhouse wild woman. All right, Santia, welcome to the show. I'm so happy to have you here, sister. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Making it, you know, <laughs> thank you for having me. Yeah, no, I love it. I, I'm, this has been like my little fireside chat while I've been in the U S everyone's not used to see me by fire, by the snow, <laughs> but you know, these have been my, some of my best interviews. I, um, uh, I, you know, I interviewed Chris, uh, Kronkowski, the uh, NFL football player, um, you know, today, and we just had like a really deep conversation and I was like, you know what? I'm so excited to, to, to speak with you, but, you know, before we get into all the amazing stuff that you've done, I mean, you've really done some big things when it comes to not only women athletes or being an example for women and young girls, we're going to talk about Tronus. Like I, you just like, wow, this girl is so, <laughs> but what I love the most, I was just on your social and um, I want my audience to make sure they're following you too, because, you know, your message is really, really powerful. I want to make sure. What is your social again? So, track baby? Track yeah, baby. Track baby 001. 001. Yep. <laughs> and, you know, I noticed that you revealed something that you got injured just recently and you weren't going to post it. Would you kind of talk about what's happened? Obviously, you're, you're a professional football player. We'll go deeper into that. But what yeah. happened and like, what's going on for you? And because I think it's a big thing by you showing up, you know? Yes. Um, so recently I actually, um, I was at practice and, um, the field was a little muddy. Um, I'm a running back. So we were doing like a pitch play, ended up kind of cutting up the field and I was slipping. And as I was slip, you know, my teammates kind of fell on top of me and my knee went backwards and then to the side. So, um, crazy thing was when I went to the doctor, the first guy I went to, he was like, Oh, it's a, it's a complete ACL tear, complete MCL tear. There's nothing you can do. Get surgery immediately, pretty much. And of course, like me hearing that as an athlete and my season hasn't even started, I was like, wait, what? Like one little like fall. Well, it wasn't little, but one little injury just ruined like my whole season. So I was literally just like devastated. Like I literally fell into a depression. I was crying every single day. Um, I could not even like take care of myself. My mom had to come over and cook for me and drive me everywhere. It was just really, really bad. Um, and then a few days later, I ended up getting a second opinion from a doctor that actually knows us. And um, he was like, uh, why did they tell you it was a complete ACL tear when it's a partial ACL tear and it's a strain MCL? So I like literally cried in the doctor's office and I all I could do was just thank God. And I've been in PT ever since. And I literally went from walking on crutches um, to fully walking without crutches, no pain in like literally like a week. So my PT is amazing. Her name is Emma, but all I can say is like, get a second opinion. Like, don't go off the first word. Like, please get a second opinion. 
Well, it's a big thing. And I really appreciate you sharing that because I grew up, I was an athlete. I played softball for the women's U.S. national team. Before I was, I'm a little older than you before oh, we what? got um, invited into the Olympics. Um, and, you know, so I know I get, you know, athletics and that's brought, I think, so much into my life, especially into business. But, you know, being an athlete at such a high level, I mean, you're playing now for, well, let's talk first. You are, you're playing for the Women's Football League, but you've yes. created a bit of history that I just recently read about. I was like, what? This woman, <laughs> you know, yes. so you just, you could, now did you, were you initially with LA and now you're with Atlanta or with Arizona? How did that work out with your? So your it's a bit of a. It's a, it's a lot going on with that story. So I pretty much made history by uh, being offered the highest contract ever for a, f- a female football player. That was back in 2019. Um, I was at the WFLA. Um, but unfortunately, things happened. COVID happened. So things didn't really work out. So now I'm with a different league, and it's called the WNFC, and I'm with Atlanta. So I'm back home pretty much, you know, about to play my season April 2nd, hopefully, if it's in God's, you know. God's will. Um, but yeah, I'm with Atlanta now. So yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Cause I was trying to get the leagues together. Cause I'm like, wow, how powerful. I mean, that is, that been something that you had aspired to? Cause I know that you were, were playing football before, but the women's league has been around. Well, I remember when the WFL came out and that was what about 15, probably 15, 20 years ago. Yeah. Or so, I right? think like, yeah something like that. 15. I yeah, think. But- you were an athlete, so had you always wanted to to be in the league? Like, how did that come up for you? So <laughs> the interesting thing with football was, so all my brothers played football, and they all were running backs funny enough. Um, I was a tomboy when I was younger, so I was doing everything they were doing. But I was a track star, so, like, I ran track all my life from 7 years old to 23. I'm now 30. Um, so all I knew was, was track. Um, when I graduated from college, I was – clearly not going to the Olympics because I just was, didn't have those times or whatever. So I kind of hung up my cleats. Um, and then I was like, okay, I want to do something like still athletic, like to kind of, you know, it's that scratch that I have to still be an athlete. So I was driving, I saw a flag football sign, went in, went to one practice, the rest was history. Like I made hit, you know, I, I set records, uh, made the USA team for flag, uh, went viral several times for flag football. Um, and then that's what attracted rugby and then now tackle football. So literally it was kind of like, Hey, I just want to continue sports and let me, let's see what happens kind of thing. And it literally is not my life. So <laughs> it's crazy. Well, that yeah. was not what you were going to school for. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, it's an interesting story to say the least. Wow. I love it. It's so good. Now, let me ask you like what, I mean, obviously now you are, you know, you're a celebrity icon. You're, you are a celebrity athlete. You know, women are looking up to you. You've got a lot of pressures, you know, with your injuries. How are you handling that, especially as a woman, you know, being in running your business, having these pressures? Like, how are you managing that, that mental health? Because I think it's a really big one, you know, especially right now, these young girls, they think we all got it together, you know? Exactly. Oh, man. If, if I'm being very transparent, um, it's not easy. It's very, it's definitely not easy. Uh, I have my days. Um, definitely now with like dealing with this injury when I completely had envisioned my 2022 so different. Um, I have to constantly remind myself that God is carrying me and God has a bigger plan for, for me. And just because I see my life this way does not mean that's what God has for me. So it's honestly constantly talking to yourself and constantly reminding yourself, like it's bigger than just me. It's bigger than just this moment. It's, it is a moment. It's not forever. Um, but Finding balance has always been an issue for me, but I can say having, I got COVID literally the first of the year. (laughs) Then two days later after that, I got injured, Um, you know, or after I healed or got over COVID. So I've been having to sit down a lot. So I'm realizing that, okay, this is needed to just honestly like recuperate, to balance yourself, to center yourself, to get your thoughts together. Because I am honestly, if I was injured right now, I'd probably be here, 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 doing all these different things. And I realize that sometimes you have to stop and smell the flowers and appreciate where you are and sit in that moment sometimes and, and just be thankful for where I'm at. So I can yeah. say 
that is what I'm, I'm learning to do more, but it is needed. Like definitely us women, like we're naturally, we multi, we multitask. That's just what we do. But we have to always remember too, that even superwoman needs to sit down sometimes and chill and keep, kick her feet up and take care of herself. So I'm learning how to do more self care as well. And that's allowing me to be more productive when I am on the field and when I am, you know, in a business meeting or whatever I'm doing, because I do have that clarity. So yeah, that's what I'll say. No, I think it's, 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 it's such a big deal. I mean, same with me You know, I've been running a business for 15 years and you know, I've got a baby and I'm running the big business and I'm doing this and I'm doing this. It's like, sometimes you have to say, it's okay to be tired or it's okay to take a break and just give yourself a moment because the, you know, that's why they say that you put your oxygen mask on first in order for us to support others. So how is that your, how is your support system then? You know, do you really lean on your support system quite a bit? Yes. Um, definitely since this injury, like I'm very independent. So this has been very hard to like accept help from people. Um, <laughs> But I I have a great team, like outside of my family, like just my assistants and, you know, my Toronto's team and everything, my friends, everybody has really just been super, super supportive right now because they know like this is hard for me. I'm not one of those people that like to sit down. I'm, I'm known to be tough and all that stuff. So it's just been really hard, but it's something that I, I definitely need. And I definitely tell people all the time, like your circle is important. Who you have around you really matters. And it really kind of shows you like where you're you're headed as far as your future. So having people that honestly want things for me more than sometimes I want for myself has definitely mm-hmm. worked out in my favor because the, those days that I am like, oh my God, like this is, I just want to chill. I'm tired. You know, I don't know if I can, keep, I can keep going. They're like, no, you got it. Or, hey, yeah, you're right. Just take a break. Go take a trip somewhere. We'll, we got it. You know, you need that. So yeah. having that has definitely been a blessing for sure. And my mom is like, my biggest supporter, my best friend. She's also the COO of my company, shoe company. So she's always like, you know, trying to protect me anyway. So, you know, I'm, I'm thankful. Yeah, I, I loved hearing that about your mom and, you know, being, you know, kind of that like guiding light with, is, is it uh, pronounced uh, Tronus? Yes. Tronus. I want to make sure I was saying it right. Um, let's talk about that because this is another major breakthrough. You've, you've made history I, you know, and I was, I was looking at these sneakers. I'm like, wow, like, this is amazing. This woman is <laughs> not you. only playing, you know, you're a, you're a huge influence, but now you've created this empire, which is really brilliant because what I love what you said earlier that, you know, your life wasn't planned to be an athlete, a pro athlete, you know, and who knows what it's, what could happen. And I think, you know, this decision and this, uh, you know, th- this, the direction that you've taken now by creating your shoe company, like it's really a brilliant business decision that you've made. How did it come about? Like, let's go into that one. Yeah. So um, with Tronos, it pretty much was an opportunity that turned into an opportunity because I was the influencer for another shoe company. I was selling the mess out of their shoes. The designer was like, Hey, like, have you ever thought about like having your own like signature shoe? And I was like, uh, yeah, like I'm a Jordan fan. I'm like, you know, I'm a sneakerhead. Like what person doesn't want their own shoe? And he was like, cool. So like, what would you kind of want it to look like? And I was like, ah, I really like Balenciaga's, the, the, the sock shoes. And then I said, I love Jordan. So I wanted like a combination of like high end, but also like, you know, athletic. Um, and we talked about it. He sketched it up. Like he literally got it the first try. So I ended up posting that sketch on my Instagram and on my LinkedIn and it went crazy on social media. They're like, I want to order now, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, wait, this is just an idea. This is not even like a real thing yet. So we went back to the drawing board. He was like, okay, let's just do a whole line, different colors, you know, um, different designs, whatever. So he mocked it up again. I posted like all those shoes on LinkedIn and on Instagram again. It went viral on LinkedIn. And then it just went crazier on fake on Instagram. And then my mom stepped in, who's also my manager. She was like, yeah, let's just do a, a shoe company. Like, forget a freaking line. Let's do a company. And I was like, what? Like, mom, we have to go against this brand and this brand and blah, blah, blah. And she was like, okay, like, you have the follow, you have the, you know, the engagement, you have the loyalty from your supporters. And I was like, uh, I don't know. She was like, okay, just pray on it. So that night, I swear I prayed on it. And um, I remember thinking like, okay, if it goes wrong, at least I can say, like, I tried to create a shoe company, which is still pretty cool. And then I was like, but if it goes right, 
I've solidified generational wealth. I'm making history, um, inspiring girls all over the world to just keep going and, and destroying these male dominated, you know, industries. And I was like, you know what, that sounds a little bit better. So I'm just going to take this leap. So I ended up taking that leap. And um, now we're here. <laughs> wow. That's, you know, these are the kind of stories that everyone's like, oh, it just happened overnight. But I know there were some pitfalls. Like, what were probably some of the things that were the hardest, you know, moments for you, you know? So, we don't talk yeah. About now. <laughs> yeah, man, we we had some some pretty dark days with Tronos. Um, I would say one of the, the moments that always sticks out to me the most because it was a defining moment was we had launched June uh, 19th in 2020. And of course, that was during the pandemic. So we were dealing with like the ports being blocked and crazy. We're dealing with trying to get our shipment over from China while also trying to like get ahead of like all the COVID restrictions and things like that. And um, we were trying to get our shoes to, to everybody by Christmas. And I don't know if you remember, but back then, like nobody was getting their shipments. Like not even the, the, the big companies like Nike had delays, Adidas, everybody. And so like, we didn't have that luxury because we were new. So if they didn't, didn't get their shoes, that was it for our company. So I remember us just trying to like, we're self-funded too. So we were trying to like, make sure we had all the money in and make sure we had everything together. Like we were like getting the samples and we wanted to change stuff. So that took like another like six weeks. It was just like so much back and forth and like trying to perfect everything. We're also trying to make sure that the money side of things is good. And I remember like me and my mom sitting in the office, like, okay, we tried, like we really tried. Like we did everything we could. We're staying up late, we're praying, you know, we're, we're trying to like figure out how to get everything together. And, you know, we we're just like, if it's meant to be, it's gonna be, if it's not, it's not, you know, we try like, and I remember that the day before, <laughs> literally like the, the cutoff was to get our shipment here to the US, like we, got the money like almost to like the penny to get our shipment out. And literally like when we got confirmation that it was off, like we just all like went out, got some shots, like cry. It was like tears of joy because that was like, okay, our baby is like walking now, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's been more than just that, but I think that was like the big thing for us was like, we honestly couldn't have been here. Like that would have been the end for us, but we say prayed up, we, we kept fighting, we kept going. We kept, we stuck together because of course, like sometimes you get in a situation it's like, oh no, it's your fault, it's your fault, you know? Like getting mad at each other, but we stuck together and we we made it happen. Um, and I tell people all the time, like being self-funded, not having investors is hard. Like don't, I know that from social media, it's like, oh, it's so glamorous, but it's tough. <laughs> wow. But we made it happen and, um, you know, we just wanted to show people that it's possible. Well, I think it's such a big story. Like, I don't know if you know, but I'm the founder of a, a book series called Women Gone Wild. And it's about these stories, like women that have fearlessly lived and done things against the normal mold, because you brought this up. And I think it's such a big thing. I mean, I'm 49 this year. And, you know, I was navigating in this male dominated industry. I was in corporate and, you know, you're just, it was like, we were taught to step on top of each other and to, to compete and to, to not support our sisters, you know? Yes. And so like, whenever I interview or I'm talking to women that have just done it and I see, and I hear that faith plays such a deep role into your success and into your business, you know? And it's, it's like, this is the type of stuff that you know, we don't, we, I used to not talk about, it was like, just be hard, do it. Don't let anyone know it's hard. No problem. You know, like none yeah. of that stuff. But now that we're really coming out, I'm seeing more women's businesses just shining because we're being truly authentic. We're leaning into our faith. We're trusting each other, you know, and I just think it's, you know, big, big kudos to your mama. I know that she had probably a big, you know, such a yeah. big part of that you know, for you too. So what's next for Chonis? Like, what are you, what's like, what are, what's the plan now? What are you, uh, where are you going next? Man, we have a lot of really big things that I can't even talk about yet, but what I can say is, you know, we we recently are partnered with East Bay. Um, oh. so that has been like a really big thing for us. It, it definitely has helped with sales and just exposure. Um, we are actually going to be in a few like, um, sneaker conventions and things like that. We're, um, also trying to, 
um, get into like a few more boutique stores, like one in New York, one in Houston, one in Miami. Um, and the big goal is first obviously getting Foot Locker um, since that's like a subsidiary of East Bay or whatever. So we have just been working literally nonstop to just continue to get exposure, um, get the word out about, about our shoes because of course, like, you know, we're new. So there's still a lot of people that don't know that we're here. But um, mm-hmm. the main thing for us is just continuing to just grow, expand. Um, and the other things that I want to talk about, I would just say, stay tuned. I'm very excited about what's coming up next. It's actually like, I can't even, I can't even say, but I'm just super excited. So just stay tuned. <laughs> watching i'll make sure everyone stays watching you we'll keep following you and um so if the big goal is to get your shoe get the brand get tronis out there more people being aware of it i want to really yes. help push yes. that so everyone make sure that you're you know pushing this out because i loved it right when i saw it i was like oh, it is such a balenciaga it's got like such a sexy yeah. <laughs> You know, like, I was like, yeah, that's definitely a woman's shoe. Like, For sure. well done. <laughs> you know? uh, I love it. So um, before you go, I, I want to um, kind of tap into like being an athlete. And, and you know, I, I know this, a lot of this comes into my life, my lifestyle and how I parent and what I do every day. But being an athlete and then bringing that into business, what what part of athletics do you think has really helped you as a businesswoman and, and where you're how you're leading? I would definitely say um, perseverance has Mm -hmm. definitely been what I've taken the most out of sports because I didn't have like the LeBron James story of like, I was just always this super athlete that was like winning everything all the time. I had a journey. Um, I was always like at the tip of like the iceberg right before I got that medal and then I got injured or something happened. So I never really hit my peak, you know, when Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, in high school and middle school and even college. So I feel like in business, that's called me that you can't give up because if I would have gave up, I wouldn't be over here playing football now, making history, playing rugby, training for the Olympics and all these different things. And everybody's story is different. You know, I'm older, but it seemed like I, I blossomed like, you know, as I got older, unfortunately, not when I was younger, but I never gave up. So even with business, I have that same mentality. As you can see, the story I just told you about Toronto's, we could have just said, oh, you know what? We tried. Bye. Forget it. Pull the plug. But my mom, just being my mom and then me, you know, being her child. And, you know, I was like, nah, like, we got to keep going. We're almost there. We're almost at the finish line. It's a reason why we're here. So let's just keep going. So I, I've taken that from sports and it's it's paid off, to be honest. <laughs> I think everybody should put their kids in, in, in a sport because it just, it builds the type of character that you can't really build with that, with anything else, you know? I agree. That's my daughter's 14 and she's a surfer. And, you know, it's like just that mentality of just like, yeah, going for it and knowing you're going to fall and knowing you're going to get hurt. You're going to get dirty. Things are going to come up. You're going to cry, you know, but it's okay. But then when you win, you're like, yes, all of it goes away. You know, all all that hard work is so worth it. Um, I absolutely love what you're all about. Um, I, uh, it's interesting. I'm, I'm going to make sure that you know, too, because at the end of May, we're launching our next book, um, the book in this wild series that I'm launching because wild for our women gone wild stands for wealth, intuition, leadership, and diversity. It's like a wild woman encompasses all I like that. more things. And we're launching the next book and it's the wealth series. And we're going to have a red carpet in LA at the end of May if you're around, sister, I'd love to have you as my guest. Um, you're such a yeah. shining yeah. example to women, to girls of really just going for it, you know, and breaking records. Yeah, history. Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying out here. But thank you. I love it. I love it. Thank you for being here, um, for being on my show. Um, we will make sure this gets broadcast to uh, as many possible people that, as we can touch because your message deserves to be heard. Where can, where should everyone follow you the most? Give them the best um, you guys can follow me on Instagram at trackbaby001. Uh, my shoe company's website is tronosofficial.com, T-R-O-N-U-S, official.com. And then my website is queenofabs.com. Okay, perfect. We'll make sure all of this is in all of our show notes, in all of mine on Instagram as well, and uh, wherever we broadcast throughout. So thank you again, my dear. Thanks for being here. Take care of that knee. Be healthy and be unstoppable. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. My pleasure.